Greetings, dear ones. Greetings, dear ones. Happy Friday the 13th. Um, what in some traditions is considered an unlucky day, but in many, many others is a day of great um, good fortune and uh, a significant number and a launch point. So um, yes, happy 13th. And in many other countries, there are different days combined with the 13th. So there really isn't any energy there unless and until a culture or a group of people or we give it that energy or give it that power. <clears throat> Welcome one and all. Um, today, we are going to be talking about bridging the divide. Now, many of you may believe that I'm uh, referring to our political divide, but that is only a representation of um, the divide that humanity is going through to be able to evolve from those places of primal, um, primitive, old ways of exploring this duality. And when, um, again, I'm talking about bridging, um, I'm referring to a way in which both uh, polarities can exist, an awareness of both polarities can occur without feeling split. For many, many years, I've been talking about mutual duality. I know that many teachings speak of non-duality, wherein um, it is not one aspect of polarity or the other, but that there is a um, resolution or there's a third possibility and if you're talking about non-duality non in that way I concur and it does dovetail with my um, perspective on what I refer to as mutual duality but so often even with that perspective there is a wronging or bad being placed on that which is um, negative or uncomfortable or destructive. Whereas in the perspective that I'm referring to, both are equally acknowledged, recognized, uh, um, honored, valued. <clears throat> so let me explain a little bit more what I mean by that. Um, we can see this divide in our national uh, forum, political forum. 
um, what appears to be two separate realities, as a matter of fact, that some people can believe wholeheartedly uh, in a way that is based in um, deception and uh, purposeful manipulation and control for the selfish purposes of the individual. Now, as children, we all experience this to one degree or another. Um, hopefully, you have been able to do some exploration of your past and have discovered that what you believe to be true about um, who you are in relation to the world is not necessarily what you perceived when you were younger. Let me expand upon that a bit. When we are young, um, what our parents do and don't do has direct effect not only on our lives, but also on our perception of who we are in relation to authority, in relation to those that hold our lives in their hands. There is unfortunately a great deal of um, use and manipulation and abuse and neglect in children's lives, even in the best of homes. Um, we are so unaware of how our actions and words affect a child. We quickly remove ourselves from what they, our memory of what we felt and continue to perpetuate a lot of the same choices, behaviors that we experienced. Oftentimes my clients hear me say that we perpetuate that which was perpetuated upon us whether to ourselves we perpetuate that and also to those around us. Um, I had a client this week who has, who found it very, very difficult for the first time to be able to talk about her relationship with her father and that she does not want to continue that on with her child, but she notices that when she's feeling particularly the same things that he continues to do, even as an adult, and say even as an adult, she finds herself snapping a bit more at her daughter and not being there as she would like to be for her daughter. And we all do that. It's it's unconscious and unwittingly, but we all do that. We all lash out or we all harm others, whether in action, word, or thoughts, um, whether we like to know it or not. And this is what we're going through is in perfect alignment with the evolutionary process. We are evolving from a species that is in so many ways still childish, still in that child mode. Um, and that's why we are experiencing now the revelation, the um, uncovering of all of those darker aspects, the lower self as is referred to in the Brennan work and many other um, psychological perspectives, the, or bio, or rather those based in um, 
the recognition that the body still holds that information and holds those issues. And that by reading the body, we can bring forward that information. We're seeing the deep, dark underbelly of this country, because we're, you know, most of us, those that are listening to this, live in this United States. And because we are, in effect, the microcosm of the world, simply because every country in the world is represented in this United States. Um, there are small groups or larger groups of people who have immigrated from everywhere around the world. And so what goes on here is very much the cutting edge or um, the uh, point of the arrow on the path. And what we've experienced over the past years, not only the past four years, but it's made more blatant and more visible in the past four years of someone who utterly is focused on themselves and what is good for them no matter the cost to others, um, someone who is so self-focused that they don't even hear or feel another. Now, I am not demonizing someone. I am looking at this as a from an objective point of view within the framework of a human's journey from childhood through to adulthood and beyond into the actual living of a full self, a whole self, an authentic self. And it cannot happen, we cannot live that authentic self until and unless we are very, very aware of and not only are aware of but feel through our child experiences and how that in its transformation can lead us to that whole self. In other words, we live in an awareness of what's going on inside of us emotionally, physio physiologically, um, in connection to those emotions as well as spiritually. Again, let me explain that a bit. When we are children and we are in that environment that is scary and uncomfortable and infuriating and sorrow-filled, in so far as we are not receiving, we are not um, having needs that are absolutely natural, absolutely um, innate to us, filled, met and filled. So a child who is experiencing, for example, let's say even um, slight abuse of their day-to-day -day world. A parent is speaking harshly to them, uh, snaps at them, uh, really doesn't feel into them and what's going on with them. I have, again, this week, the theme is primarily focused on uh, has been with clients and colleagues, not focused on the male representation in their life. And if there has not been male representation, i.e. a father figure, then there is still the experience of that lack of the types of security and the types of safety 
that the ideal masculine represents. So again, we're talking about a duality of realities. A child inside, in their physical, intuitive, instinctual, spiritual selves have expectations. These are not in the mental because a child does not function from there. This is literally physio-energetic, meaning that it's the body and the energy field, um, psycho-emotional, that the emotions need to be met in order for that child to feel safe and secure and be able to grow up knowing and being uh, um, confident in who they are. So a child that is not receiving what they instinctually and intuitively expect gets wounded, wounded in a variety of ways. And the emotions, the pure emotional state of a child comes forth. They do not have filters. When a child feels something, whether it's positive or negative, it is felt in its in complete and utter 100% intensity because a child will feel, and those of you who have children know when they're angry, it's they're angry down to their fingertips. They're angry to every little part of their body. And that anger may last a very short time, but it is intense and it is felt on every single level of their body. I mean, every single level, level of their being, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, energetically, they are feeling that emotion. And yet when there is pushback from the parent or there is a great lack or neglect of meeting those, those uh, natural needs that are part of human experience and human development, then there is a realization in the child of what's going on, not entirely mentally, but as they grow a little bit older, their minds also see and know along with their bodies and energy fields this is not right. This is not the way it's supposed to be. You are not supposed to be treating me this way. It is not supposed to be happening like this. But there is also an awareness that without this parent, they are not going to be able to survive. And so what are you going to do with that reality? This is the way my parent is. This is what is happening the child begins to shut down or close off or deny what they actually feel and know inside in order to live in that environment and live with that behavior or lack of for years, another 16, 17, 18 years even if they are able to leave, let's say at 18, you are trapped in that and you have no power over making this parent do what they're supposed to do, stop doing what they're not supposed to do. You have no control over the decisions that are made, over what goes on in your environment and that necessitates the denial of your inner knowing, your inner awareness, your inner truth of what you feel, what you internally know should be. And this should isn't in accord with any societal or um, even you know any intellectual or psychological or social 
cultural norms. It's not according to anyone's rules. This is the internal child, the inner self that comes in with expectations and um, needs and sensations that are supposed to be met in the ideal. When that doesn't occur, the child absolutely must deny what they're experiencing and their own feelings and buy into in one way or another the life, the experience, the home that they live in. Oftentimes that means um, becoming what you think the parent wants you to be so that there's a higher possibility of you receiving that. Sometimes it's stopping being who you are and what is natural, again, in the hope that that might cause the parent to respond in the way that is needed and desired. In all essence, becoming or being or stopping being who you naturally are. And this creates great fear, it creates great doubt, it creates great anger, and it creates great sorrow that things are not the way your internal system wants and needs and expects it to be. We're not seeing any of that in the outside world, right? So what we are seeing is this divide between two what seem like political groups, but are not. This is the child within us denying reality, denying what is occurring because they need and want and long for the parent to respond in the way that they're supposed to. And there is a sensation, there is a deep belief that if you give up um, that dream, that wish, that longing, that desire, then it's never going to occur. So you have to hold on to it no matter what your internal self is indicating to you. So even if people are seeing the um, detriment of behaviors and choices that representatives in our government are making, the um, metaphors for our parents, we still have to stick with the denial, stick with the lies, stick with the um, illusion that my parent really isn't, my daddy really isn't hurting me. My daddy really isn't, there, you come up with excuses and rationalizations and justifications for what's being done. Again, none of that going on in the outside world, right? We are individually the um, opportunity or in our individual lives, we have the opportunity to look at this piece because that's what's here right now, along with many, many helpers, which I'll reveal in just a few moments giving us the opportunity to search deep within and to access those parts of us that are denying reality, whether it's in the national scene, whether it's in our personal world, in our families, with our jobs, our bosses, that leaves us in this split sensation inside, wanting, hoping, expecting, longing for the spouse, the parent, the boss, the uh, church leader, the uh, corporations, the political uh, representatives, our 
largely our leaders to do what they're supposed to do. And we know that that's not occurring and that negation of what we're feeling inside creates a large divide and causes us to disconnect from our own feelings, to disconnect from our own knowing, <clears throat> to split ourselves. And that's that great chasm that we're experiencing right now, or it seems like a huge chasm to get over when in fact it isn't actually um, that uh, scary as we believe it to be, to look inside and to change these things, whether individually or as a society. We're in a process of evolution. This is insanely difficult and intense because we are, as a species, attempting to do this very, very large leap of evolution in a very short period of time, which is why everything is coming to the surface, which is why our lower selves are blatantly on display. And by lower selves, I mean those first and second, very, very primitive, very uh, base instincts and aspects of human nature. It was funny, I popped on Facebook for two minutes and um, just to connect this uh, talk today and saw a friend who had just finished Game of Thrones. And I've often referred to that as very much um, a, an outpicturing of some of the still first and second dimensional aspects that are here on this planet. And by that, I mean the warring with one another, the horrific, if anybody has seen this week in Africa, um, not positive it was Mozambique, but the horrific genocide and torture that is going on in many, many, many countries still from one people to another, one tribe to another. This cannot continue if we are to up-level human nature, humanity, to a higher form of duality. And so in the individual, we cannot live with this great divide within, this great divide between what we our inner knowing and our outer world. And that's why I've encouraged people very much so that even in meditation that you not, the, the type of meditation I teach, if you could call it meditation, is not to go up and out and away from to search in a particular bandwidth of energy, but instead to go down and inside to explore your inner world, to explore the inner universe, all that you have experienced and gleaned and accumulated over eons of existence. Because what you know inside is true. What you innately feel is dead on your internal compass your connection your innate which i'm pointing to an area that's about three finger widths below that round bone where your ribs come together if you can find that your diaphragm your third chakra actually is right underneath that and if you lay three fingers sideways together Right about there is where your innate sits, often referred to as your gut. You know, when you know things in your gut, 
and follow that, it will never, ever, 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 ever steer you wrong. Your mind will because your defense system is in the mind and has been doing everything possible to allow that child to live in circumstances that were intolerable, which caused that split by adjusting, oh, that isn't really what's happening. Justifying, rationalizing, excusing, changing the perception. Your heart can often also be fooled, but your gut will never be affected by what's going on in the outer world. So I encourage and teach people how to access that inner place from which when you move and your deeper desires of your essence come forth, the universe meets that and starts cooperating and collaborating with you to create opportunities, things that you could not even have imagined to allow you the physical means by which you can express that inner essence. Um, just checking if there's anything else in my notes. Um, so yes, oftentimes a lot of the pundits are speaking about two realities, but there really is not two realities. There is only the denial of the reality that is uncomfortable or painful or infuriating or scary. And for that, we have uh, assistance this week from Orion. It's, he's been, the night skies have been absolutely more powerful and more clear and more apparent than I've ever seen them here on the East Coast. Uh, despite the, the diffusion of the night sky by the many lights, the increase in lights in many ways that people have put on their homes and businesses. And so I encourage everyone. Um, we have had meteor showers for months, different meteor showers, the Taurids, T-A-U-R-I-D meteor shower is this month. Um, we've had comets, we've had asteroids, the night sky, the cosmos is attempting to reach you and let you know that you are aided on every level in every way imaginable. And if you look to what is right now, it's, that's east, uh, would be more or less the southeast uh, area of the sky, you will see um, Orion that has been very, very present. You can see two stars that represent his shoulders, two stars that represent his feet. In the middle, Orion's belt is a slanted line of three stars. And if you look very closely, actually the last few nights, it's been very, very clear. You can see his sword hanging down, which is actually the Orion Nebula. And Orion, you know, has his feet towards the earth and his shoulders towards the heavens. And that's really that representation of us. We are that bridge between heaven and earth, between the divine and human. And we're going to be bringing, if you can feel those of you who are sensitive to energy, if you can feel for the past three to five minutes, the energetics have been moving in to create the sacred geometric container within which you are able to sit today in our meditation or energy healing practice section. 
and we also have help from Chiron. Chiron is the centaur, the centaur with the body of a man, head and shoulders down to about mid abdomen, and the rest of the body is a horse. And that's representative of our bestial nature and our human um, higher self. Okay, that lower self and higher self that I was referring to. And yet Chiron is also the great teacher, the great healer. So again, very, very present for us. Um, Michael as well, always represented by the strong masculine warrior for a couple decades now, many, many people have been channeling Michael energy as his, the development of the more feminine aspects. And we all have already the opportunity to access the more um, pure or um, higher masculine traits of you know, and, and again, not to be political, but it is interesting that we have such a juxtaposition in father figures with um, our current president who really does not have um, the family representation of, of as, a, as a parent, um, where there is such selfishness and self-centeredness and um, abuse really of emotions. And if, again, if you have not seen that in, in its blatant way over the past four years, then um, again, I would, I would look to your own negation of that experience. Um, and yet, and then on the other hand, we have a man, again, I'm not vilifying or um, making someone a hero, but in Biden, you can see a man who went out of his way to be the father that he wanted to be for his children whether that was the two hours back and forth, two hours down and two hours back in the morning on the train in order to tuck his children in at night and say good morning to his children and see them off, or the compassion and understanding and true feeling for another. So we are going through that um, development process as a species when someone must mature from the childhood expectations and wanting and needing the parent to be something that they are not and the denial of the reality of who they are. The current president has shown us who he is over and over and over and over again. And yet people again, rationalize, justify, excuse, deny what they know to be true. And so there is nothing wrong with what's going on. There are no mistakes. We are in perfect timing and perfect alignment with the evolution of this species. And it's being played out beautifully in our current national situation, giving us all that opportunity. Um, what else? Uh, I think as we drop in more deeply, more of the helpers will appear. That's why I encourage everyone so much to uh, participate in this process, participate in this um, live event, 
because your input, what you have been noticing, what's going on, what has been going on in your world and those um, helpers that you have or guides or teachers or um, animals that have been coming to you are very much a part of the conjoined effort of those in the non-physical to bring information, to bring guidance, to bring assistance to us. So please be aware of them. Um, yes. So we are evolving out of that Game of Thrones level of dominance and control and power over and oppression um, into a new way of being. And you are here on purpose. You chose to be a participant in this grand adventure. And what you do individually affects what goes on on the larger scale. The deeper you go, the wider the reach. Not that that is necessarily the purpose. You are here for your soul's purpose, but it will have direct effect, not only on those around you and your community, <clears throat> but on your culture, on your lineage, and on your species. So please give yourself the honor and the respect and the admiration and the gratitude that is being given to you constantly when and as you tune your abilities to the subtle symbolic language of those beings in the non-physical. And again, those of you who are sensitive can feel the formation of this sacred geometric configuration within which you are able to settle and let go of your need to hold yourself in safety and security because within this configuration, you are energetically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally and physically secure, safe, to be able to sink down and inside of you. Down and within, lie all the answers. Down and within lies your true knowing. Down and within you'll find your internal compass giving you direction all day, 
every day if you so choose. And as you learn to rely on and trust that which is natural to you, that which is innate, that which you came into this plane of existence with. And the more you are able to transform, change, your misperceptions, mistaken beliefs, about who you are and your place in this world and in this universe. The more that divide between your human self and your divine self narrows. The less denial of reality is needed. For you are able to see, perceive, feel, experience this current reality. from a deeply centered, deeply secure, sense of self, Again, just allow your energy field and your wider self, which is your soul self, to know exactly how to assist you and guide you down and within. No efforting or work. For that comes from will. No focus or intention for those come from mind. Simply, gently asking and allowing your body, your energy field, your wider self, your guides and teachers and masters, To gently and consistently guide you, lead you down and within your inner verse. In indigenous cultures around the world, the seven directions <clears throat> are invoked, as we shall do now. 
in the direction of the east, in the direction of the west, the direction of the south, the direction of the north, the direction of above. the direction of below. And the direction of within. The more you allow By not <clears throat> engaging your mind and your vision or your third eye or even your mind's eye, let them all take a back seat instead permitting your inner world to come to the fore. Simply sensating in your body your energy field whatever you might be experiencing. Keep allowing yourself to be led to drop down and in, down and in, truth your knowing enable you to bridge You may feel yourself kind of moving into a sleepy state, which is just fine. As a matter of fact, that is ideal. To sensate or experience that in-between place. somewhat similar to as you're falling asleep or just when you're waking up, when you are half in a dream state and half aware of the bed, the covers, just on that edge. So too, are you able to experience that edge state between your internal world and the external world? Between your inner knowing and your outer awareness and 
if your system is calling for you to drift off to what appears or seems to be sleep, that's quite all right. I will continue to speak, but you need not follow my words, but you will feel the transmissions through my voice so that you can let go of the concern about the recording or the transmission electronically. And simply feel the transmission energetically. The exact right energetic transmission for you in this moment. For this is not a uniform frequency for all to merely merge into. But instead, in this particular way of geometrically, mathematically configuring, nothing you need do and it's being done for you. But in this way, you're able to have, feel, receive exactly what is right for you. Which may differ greatly from the energetic frequency transmission for someone else. For this container enables each to be individuated and yet interconnected. Which is exactly what ultimately this evolutionary process can result in. for each of us to be individuated from the childhood experiences, the old authority, the outer authorities, to the internal authority. that your inner knowing is the first and last word for you. That part of you knows best for you, wants best for you,
leads you to the best for you. Enabling you to bridge fear to faith. Doubt to trust. The human experience to the divine experience of you. the divided you to the unified you. child you to the mature you. All this is bridged. those divides within are bridged, so shall they be. In the external, outer world, in this transformation process, revealing individually to you the soul purpose, S-O-U-L, purpose <clears throat> of your experience. It. You may experience a deepening of the energetics, your experience of you. Begin having a foot in both worlds, so to speak where you're able to sensate and receive sensation from your internal self while at the same time 
experiencing and sensating your physical human self. The more you are able to practice this, the more you will be able to stand in both at once, experience both your internal and external simultaneously, having constant access to your innate, to your inner knowing, as you navigate through your day to day, much like twilight and sunrise, those moments when both day and night are experienced, so too are you able to be both in your internal world and the external world. Without having to separate or divide your human and divine self. Thus allowing you to be in the eternal present and as the energetics are being incorporated and integrated into your system. Really allow yourself to experience that in-between place where you are both where you are sensating both. That more non-physical experience, an energetic, spiritual experience at the same time, sensating your human physical
right is in that delicious in between place. Bridging. Where are you? Fully physically and spiritually aware of exquisite security and safety where all is exactly as it should be, it needs to be, has been called to be. By you and the collective consciousness Evolution. And in this space, oftentimes. One may receive information, symbols, shapes, words, pictures, song may come in, song title, story, book, legend, all the many resources that Are available to your wider self, your guides and teachers and masters to aid you lead you ever so gently, not pulling yourself back, but organically allowing your energy field, your wider self to guide you in your most perfect way. In other words, not necessarily by your mind deciding, but much as when you're very gently and slowly allowing yourself to come from a sleeping state to a waking state, Allow this process in your time and your pace. And when and as you're ready, open your eyes and I encourage you to have water and to increase your intake of water over the next 
day or so, whenever you may listen to this. For that was a very, very deep process. And a little bit longer than normal because this has been such an exceptional time. And we are still in the throes of what appears to be division. I encourage you to listen back again to the energetic practice part, the meditation part of this, again and again and again, letting your system receive, re-experience that in between, that place where you are very connected to your internal, and at the same time the external and as you practice this you are able to experience this live this on a day-to-day -day basis throughout your day not just when you can escape for a little bit to meditate and as always, I would be honored and privileged to assist in any way to help you meet and be more in touch with and move from that internal place. Helping you to transform, transmute aspects of you and you can always contact me here on facebook or at healers universe page or on youtube the channel is a healers universe that's a h e a l e r s universe or the website healersuniverse.com. Until next time, again, as always, my deepest honor, gratitude, and love for you being here on the planet at this time. Be well.